booktube it's kim at middle of the book march and today's video is uh somewhat of a planning video which i don't normally do with my reading but i'm gonna do it this time because i felt like it and what i'm calling it is uh project books for 2024 and what i've done is i've decided to read 24 project books in 24 and I've divided it up between 12 fiction and 12 nonfiction. This is Editing Kim coming back to remind you, not to even to remind you because I don't know if I even told you to begin with, but I'm also going to have a list of 12 nonfiction books and I will have that video posted next week. So keep an eye out for that one if you are more interested in nonfiction. So I will have an additional 12 books for my book project next year, 24 and 24. So what I want to show you today are the books that I've picked out for my fiction books that I want to read as a project in 2024. My disclaimer right up front is I don't know if I'm going to get to all of these in 2024. And in the grand scheme of things, it's only 24 books total for all of next year. So I, I can do it. It's whether I'm going to or not. <laughs> so I don't do well with TBRs. If I put restrictions on myself, I usually bust bust them wide open and I rebel against myself. But this is a, going to be just a list of books that I would love to get to. I, I, I keep repeating myself. I don't know if I'm going to, but let me show you what books I've pulled off my shelves, off my shelves, that I would like to treat as projects next year. <laughs> Now, I'm first going to show you three books that I'm considering one book because it's a series and they've also been bound up as one book um, and they are going to lead off of Remember December because what I'm going to do in December is I am going to reread The Hobbit. So next year, I will be um, putting on my list of project books, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And this is number one, The Fellowship of the Ring. Number two, The Two Towers. And number three, The Return of the King. And I have these really nice paperback reprints. I, I kind of really like these. And I don't normally like the movie or TV adaptation covers, but I actually really like these. I think they're pretty well designed. So these three books I'm considering one because... I also have talked to a couple of other booktubers who want, hopefully, to read these with me next year. And I figure, you know, I'm not going to blow through all of them in one month, but I figure if we spread them out a little bit, then we'll get the whole series read. And because I'm reading The Hobbit in December, after I've done this, maybe I'll reread The Silmarillion. That's going to be a project unto itself. So, the next one, I want to go back to... The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I, this was on my Mooks and Gripes bucket list book list. And I read most of The Left Hand of Darkness, but I didn't finish it. I, wasn't, I was having a really hard time with it. And I was, I was going between audio and the text. And I want to get back to it. I want to reread the text. And this is a bind up of the Hainish Novels and Stories, Volume 1. And I have read the first three and really enjoyed them. And the fourth is The Left Hand of Darkness. These are not a series that you have to read in order to understand each of the books, but that's what I have done. So I do want to get to The Left Hand of Darkness next year. We'll see. That one's a little intimidating because I know what I'm getting into. <laughs> um, this one is Gail Jones' Mosquito. I am a big fan of Gail Jones's writing, and this one is a is a giant one. This is over 600, just over 600 pages. Um, and one thing you might notice in these project books is some of them are pretty massive. <laughs> so that's another reason why I'm not sure I'll get to all of them, but I do want to get to Mosquito by Gail Jones. This is a Let's see, a rare and unforgettable journey set along the U.S.-Mexico border about identity immigration and the new Underground Railroad. So yes, that looked really good. She's an excellent writer, and Toni Morrison kind of discovered her. So anybody that Toni Morrison likes, I like too. Here's another one that is a high fantasy novel. This one, um, I don't know if this is one book or if, I think this is one book. 
Yeah. This is um, Ash, A Secret History by Mary Gentle. I don't remember how I found out about this, but I'm in, I was intrigued and I had to get my hands on it. And this book, I don't believe, it may be out of print at this point. Let me see. This is, oh gosh, I can't even find a publication date. I will. It'll just take me a minute. And you know that I always do this, is I have to go to the title page and I usually fill in with chatter. Here we go. Oh, this was published in 1999. I don't remember if this is still in print, but this is the magnificent tale of the gutsy and beautiful mercenary leader, Ash, uh, who will take you on an unforgettable ride through medieval Europe as it never quite was. For Ash, life has always been arc, arc buses and artillery, swords and armor, and the true horrors of hand-to-hand -hand combat. War is her job, but she doesn't realize that the voice in her head is not the Lord and his saints, but something far, far stranger. I remember now why I found this. I was looking for fantasy novels written by and about women, and I came across this title and found myself an excellent used copy. So that is on my list of project books, project fiction for 2024. Here's another massive book. This is Annie Prue's Bark Skins. Uh, Annie Prue is another author I love. I read At Close, Ra Close Range, her Wyoming stories which includes Brokeback Mountain and is incredible. The Shipping News I absolutely loved and I've had this on my shelf for a while and I wanna read this one sometime, hopefully next year. This is another book about trees. In the late 17th century, two penniless young Frenchmen, Rene Sal and Charles Duquet, arrive in Canada, then known as the New France. Bound to a feudal lord for three years in exchange for land, they become woodcutters, barkskins. Sal, suffering extraordinary hardship in the forest he is charged with clearing, is forced to marry a Mi'kmaq woman. Duquet, crafty and ruthless, runs away, becomes a fur trader, then sets up a timber business. And this is a multi-generational descendant kind of epic story, um, epic family story about those characters. So a lot of these books are not in necessarily intimidating by their content, you know, aside from the left hand of darkness, but much of many of them are long. And um, yeah, I think most of them are pretty long. Here's the next one uh, that I'm actually really excited about, The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. And it's, a, it's let's see, Mann uses a sanatorium in the Swiss, Swiss Alps, a community devoted exclusively to sickness as a microcosm for Europe, which is in the years before 1914, was already exhibiting the first symptoms of its, of its terminal irrationality. This is a, you know, classic, modern classic of literature, and I really would love to crack this open. It's funny, this was published in 1995 um, in this edition, but I also, when I picked up these books as project books, I looked at the font <laughs> because I wanted to get books that were visually easy to read. Why would I not do that? This is a, also, this is going to be a reread, but I haven't read this book since high school. And this is the translation I want to read of Homer's The Odyssey, translated by Emily Wilson. She just came out with the Iliad translation, but I want to wait till that one comes out in softcover so I can buy that one and have that as a set. However, I do want to read the Iliad before I read the Odyssey. So... I may read the Iliad in a different um, translator's version, the Caroline Alexander translation, and then next year I will go to the Odyssey, and then when her, when Emily Wilson's version of the Iliad comes out in paperback, I will probably pick that up. But I, I could say that I really want to read that next year, but I picked these books because I really want to read all of them. Now, this one is one of the oldest novels on my shelf. This is The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. And this one was published in, I'm always too slow, 1962. This is the story of Anna, or Anna, who is a writer. She is the author of one very successful novel who now keeps four notebooks. In one with, in one with the black cover, she reviews the African experience of her earlier years. In a red one, she records her political life, her disillusionment with communism. In a yellow one, she writes a novel which the heroine relives part of her own experience. 
And in a blue one, she keeps a personal diary. Finally, in love with an American writer and threatened with insanity, Anna tries to bring the threads of all four books together in a golden notebook. I've had this forever. I have heard from friends that it's just an excellent book. Uh, and this is another one that might be, I don't know if I'm necessarily intimidated by this one too much, but it's it's been hanging around for a long time. I want to get to it. Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses. Uh, <laughs> there was great font in this one, and it's a nice, nice, easy to read paperback. Um, you know, when this first came out, just the scandal, the media attention that this book got, I was hooked from then, but I've never picked it up. I think I was kind of intimidated at the time. This was originally copyrighted in 1988 by Salman Rushdie. Um, this is set in a modern world filled with both mayhem and miracles. The story begins with a bang, the terrorist bombing of London, of a London-bound jet in mid-flight. Two Indian actors of opposing sensibilities fall to earth, transformed into living symbols of what is angelic and evil. This is just the initial act in a magnificent odyssey that seamlessly emerges the actual with the imagined. From what I understand, Salman Rushdie is a, m a master of magical realism, and that doesn't sound any different to me. The next, there's three left. This one is Gaskell's Wives and Daughters, Elizabeth Gaskell. This is uh, one of several Gaskell books I have on my shelf. This one I really would love to read. I also have North and South. And I, I mean, I, honestly, I would love to read all of Gaskell's novels, but um, this one has been on my shelf, I think, for the longest. And I really love this pink Barnes & Noble paperback edition with that artwork on the cover. These will often have paintings that really don't have anything to do with the content, but it will kind of refer back to the time, the era. This is called Fantasia in White by Albert Lud Ludovici. And uh, very pretty painting on that one. But yeah, Gaskell's Wives and Daughters. This one, this will get read next year because this is a book that my book group and I have been talking about reading together. We started reading, we read The Count of Monte Cristo and we read Middlemarch together last this past year. This one was our next project book that we were going to read together. And this is Les Mis by Victor Hugo. One of the longest books in my personal collection, along with The Count of Monte Cristo, and along with War and Peace that I have on a shelf, and I almost included that in this list of project novels, but I did not. I, I think I wrote it down, but I had to eliminate because I ended up with 16 novels and I only wanted 12. But Les Mis by Victor Hugo will get read next year. I'm almost, almost positive, almost certainly positive. All right, last one. This is a book that I read half of and put it down. This is a very dense book with a lot of metaphor and allegory in this, but it is spectacular. And I wanted to give it far more energy than I was giving it last year. I think I picked it up. This is Paradise by Toni Morrison. This book has an enormous amount of religious allegory and religious symbolism. And on every page, I was recognizing so many things and like, oh, I have to slow down. I got to slow my roll and reread this book so that I can pick up everything so that I can kind of glow in Morrison's writing and bask in the beauty and the mastery of her writing. But I, I so want to pick this back up and take my time with it, maybe even take notes or uh, certainly highlight some things. But there's so much to talk about with this book. There's so much to talk about with the religious themes and the family themes and the themes about racism and exclusion. I really can't wait to get back to this one. So those are the 12 officially 14 novels. Lord of the Rings is being considered as one novel. So those are the 12 project novels I would love to get to next year. And even if I can't get to all of them, I would love to crack some of this list and get this pile down maybe by half you know i i'm not going to set a number goal on myself but i am going to look to these novels as the the ones i go to for my projects 
And it'll be interesting. I'll tell you next year which one I reach for first. I have a feeling it might be Les Mis. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this project. Let me know what you think about any of the books I showed you. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye.